This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. This is Rob Casting Radio. Live from the Brewster Ice Arena for the second time in a week, the Mayapak Indians and the Carmel Rams come together, but tonight it is for charity on the ice. It is Hockey Fights Cancer, and we welcome you inside the BIA. With Harold Turk, I'm Rob Adams, and it is Mayapak Carmel for the second time in just about a week, and we're looking forward to seeing these two teams meet up once again. The Indians won last week, and tonight, well, we'll see what happens in the rematch Harold, the bottom line was in talking with both coaches, neither coach very happy with the result last week. Absolutely. Um, immediately following the game, we ran into uh, Coach McKee, and he basically said the same thing. He goes, he goes, we won. That was it. So, yeah, I think they, they were not happy with the amount of chances that Carmel got. And conversely, the uh, coach from Carmel mentioned to me, Coach uh, Chacha said, we should never be giving up five goals to one player. So, yeah, there's definitely some room for improvement here. Absolutely, as, uh, you know, a wonderful night for T.J. McKee with five goals, as Harold alluded to last week. But working Brian O'Shea as well, he worked in a hat trick along the way. So it was a good night for the Indians as we are getting ready for some of the on-ice ceremonies, some things starting down below, and we'll see what... uh, I know we're going to see some special stuff. We're going to see a special puck drop out here tonight. That is the uh, rumor, and I believe it's true. We're going to see Dax, the service dog from Carmel, um, at least attempt to drop the puck. If not, he's going to be here, and that's uh, really cool because he has his own Twitter uh, page, and quite honestly, he has more followers than me. So, For the live audience, I will warn you in advance, the Internet is uh, more of a myth than reality, so just keep that in mind because I noticed where connections already dropped, so we will record, we will put it online, and... We'll do the best we can with it. That's all we can do. They are rolling out some uh, mats and whatnot so that the teams can be, uh, so that we can see the puck drop and all that. But why don't we linger in and listen to the introductions of the starting lineups. Well, here comes Dax, and Dax is getting the biggest hand of the night. (laughs) Dax makes his way right out onto the ice, and they say, nope, come on back. Come on back onto the mat. (laughs) Dax wants to get out there. 
Dax just wants to play. That's right. So they'll actually bring out. <laughs> he just doesn't. <laughs> I see it and I panic. I know. Running around on the ice. Dax is having some fun, though. And has already put the puck on the ice. There you have it. Well done, Dax. <laughs> As Matt LaFontaine came out for the Rams to receive the uh, ceremonial puck drop, TJ McKee as well. And now we will go for our national anthem and then get things going for Hockey Fights Cancer. Bear with us. Maybe a little hard to hear the anthem, but we will do our best. Obviously, as you can hear, a pretty good crowd on hand. Better turnout than there was the other night. That was kind of shaky weather in, anyway on Sunday night, so this is uh, a better turnout tonight, and certainly for Hockey Fights Cancer Night. It's always a decent turnout when Carmel plays Mayapak in almost any sport. Um, a Sunday night, bad weather, yeah. It was a little less than what they might have expected, but we were expecting pretty big crowds, and they certainly didn't disappoint tonight. Not tonight at all. And I have to admit, when I drove out, when I walked out, because I thought you and I might, you know, grab something to eat or something after the game, and I know you had to get your daughter home. I will not say her name tonight, <laughs> but you, you had to go. And I walk out, and I went, I'm glad I'm going home because it's snowing really hard. <laughs> started out not a problem, but partway out Croton Falls Road, the roads got a little dicey. Yeah, it got a little slick towards uh, yeah, towards Croton Falls, but you know, overall it wasn't so bad, but yeah, I understood why people didn't come. Yeah. A quick glance at the starting lineups once again. Brian O'Shea will start for the Indians. Aiden Martin will be on defense. Cooper Betancourt as well for the Indians with Logan McDougal in net and, of course, T.J. McKee at one of the forwards. For the Carmel Rams, Graham Ludwig on defense. They will also send out Gavin Golisano back on the blue line with Brendan Murphy, Stephen Mount, and Megan Ravert in net. The Indians will skate from right to left. The Rams will do the opposite, and we are underway, and we will show no bias despite the swag we have been given. To the right circle we go, and Arister goes well wide to get us underway. 14 seconds gone by. Back comes O'Shea, trying to set it up out in front. In the slot waiting was McKee. And the Rams will bring it back the other way. Golisano, Luke Golisano goes down the right wing, heading toward the end boards into the right corner of the Indian zone. The Indians will bring it back out, wearing the very blue-purple jerseys as it comes down on net. The net comes off the moorings, and we will stop play with a penalty coming right off the bat. We will see the call. It is tripping. Yeah, there was definitely a trip there coming in. Um with speed, unfortunately, with the Carmel uh, defense, they let him come in with speed and got basically the only play you can make is to take them down to not allow a kind of mini breakaway. 
It's Gavin Golisano going off for the Rams at 38 seconds in. And that is not the start that Carmel wanted. Faceoff will come to the right side of Megan River. Again, two minutes for New York State now on the penalties, as opposed to the 90 seconds in the, pa- in the uh, past. Rather. Off the draw, comes down to the Indians as they win the faceoff, goes into the left corner. Controlled by Nick Bricker, who is on for the Indians. Into the right corner, spinning around is Gavin Golisano. Sends to the far side, Indians keep it in. Left circle, trying for a wrister that is blocked by the Rams, Graham Ludwig, who said we didn't say his name enough. I'm only kidding. Into the right circle, it goes feeding into the slot, looking for a backhander, nothing there. And this is thrown all the way out and back down to the other end. It's nice to have a little familiarity with these teams. That's true. Once you get to know some of the players, you actually know um, the numbers, the players, and then you know their style, you know where they're going, and... uh basically what type of player they are. It's kind of nice. McKee with a sharp angle backhander from the near side. That not his natural shot. He almost knocked it in with a rebound off of Ravert. But making the save is the goaltender with 119 to go on the advantage. 1541 to go in the opening frame. Yeah, the one thing Carmel has to make sure they do is, is try to contain McKee. And unfortunately on a power play for them, there's not going to be a lot of chances. They're gonna ha- He's going to get some open ice. Off the face off, it is controlled by the Rams and sent all the way down into the Indian zone. We've got the Ram cheering section just outside of our press box. We've gone to a new location tonight. We are up actually on the second floor of the Brewster Ice Arena. Coming down the left side is McKee. McKee gets on net. Couldn't quite get anything on it, so he holds on to it himself in the right circle. Bottom of the circle, sends it back out just inside the point, down the right side of the Ram zone. Right circle, McKee. He goes into the corner, gets tangled up there with Robert Paradiso for the Rams. No score, 40 seconds remaining on the power play. Big blast coming from the right point. This is held in along the near side boards. A little backhander sends it back to McKee. He'll play it by himself off the boards and off to the right corner. No score, 25 remaining on the advantage. Sent back down into the Indian zone. And it'll be left aside by Logan McDougal, the senior goaltender for the Indians. They are 7-0 and on the year. Tim Donahue is their head coach. Sean McGee is the assistant. On the other side, it's Michael Chacha, the head coach, with Brian Samaniego and Chip Chacha. Hopefully I said all that right. Better you than me. <laughs> Nine seconds remaining on the advantage. One thing I wanted to mention, um, I noticed a little difference in the way Carmel was, was uh, defending against McKee, uh, McKee on the uh, um, power play there. They were definitely keeping a, a defenseman on the, on the line there, not chasing the puck. They were making sure there was nothing being brought in front of the net. Off the draw, played just outside of the Ram zone. We're down to four remaining. I mentioned the swag, by the way. Craig Bricker was nice enough to walk up with some Mayapak goodies for both of us. Now, Harold is the Carmel resident and Carmel dad, but he is wearing a Mayapak hat tonight. Me to the sweatshirt and the Mayapak hat. However, I'm a Mayapak grad, but no rooting either way. 14.09 to go first period. Right circle. Here come the Rams. Left behind in that right circle. Played over there. Jack Lagan, he had a goal the other night for the Rams. Down to 13.59 to go. First period, no score. Indians bringing it back. It'll pop around into the left corner as Aiden Martin takes a check in that corner. Rams able to secure it, bounce it off the near side boards, and they'll play it along with Jack Lagan. So, yeah, to the to the top level we go tonight here at the BIA, leaving the photographer's room in the press box, so I'm sure they're quite relieved. But this is uh, a little bit better setup. One thing you got to keep in mind when you're doing a broadcast, you need a little more time to set up, and, and you don't get access to that booth until really just before game time. As we already saw another game earlier tonight, Fox Lane and Pauling. Off to the far side it goes, along the boards there for the Indians. Ryan Carraher, the sophomore there for Mayapak. Carmel at 2-5 and five on the year. Coming up on four minutes gone by, first period, still no score. As the Rams were able to survive the Mayapak power play. In the left corner, just a little kick to the near side and played by the Indians with Mike Sotilli. We were having a chat with him before the game tonight as well as Dad, to be exact. 
Yeah, he was. He came over, wanted to know where where the broadcast was going to be, and uh, that was it was pretty cool. And now that the, you picked up a new fan, Rob. <laughs> well, hopefully everyone will enjoy the broadcast after the game is over, because again, a little shaking on the internet. Coming back out into neutral zone ice, twelve thirty-five to go, first period, and it's still no score. Maya Pack and Carmel as we fight cancer, something we do every day, of course, but raising money for it tonight. Played back out into the neutral zone. The Rams have got it. They're in the pink tonight. Well, Mayapak uh, rocking in the purple and a hit along the boards. A little how you doing coming from Fata Pasquale, who I remember played very hard last week as well. Yeah, and actually... Um, Although in that case, it was Nick Biagini, excuse me, yes. but still. Well, yeah, I was going to say um, Pasquale Fata had his uh, first goal of, as a varsity player against Pauling um, last game. As the Rams lost, I believe, 5-4. In overtime. In yep. overtime. Here's McKee, left circle. McKee dances in, lost the handle, and then the shot is blocked out of the right circle. The Rams will bring it back. They have the numbers in a two-on-two -two as they get it across the line. They go to the left circle, trying to work it around. It goes behind the net, looking for the poke home. Nice little nifty play just off to the near side of the cage. 11.38 to go first period. That was a good play. That's Brendan Murphy once again, who we talked about quite a bit the other night. Super freshman for the Rams. Yeah, Murphy has, um, I believe, seven goals already this season, and uh, for a freshman, that's pretty impressive. He's the leading scorer for Carmel right now with 17 points. Played on the far side boards in the Rams zone, 11-19 to go first period, no score. Rister, this bounces off, off the netminder. Megan Raver comes to the near side. She played a little bit last Sunday night, but really just a quick relief shot. Second try, and it's going to be McKee again to put it home. It's one nothing. Yep, and that was um, basically nothing Ra Raver could do on that. He makes the save. It came right to um, McKee as he was standing there, and he was wide open. He just bounced it off of her and in the net. So a little, a little shaky in the defensive zone there, but I do think that Carmel is playing a different style of game right now, so it may take them a little bit of adjustment because the way that I see the defensive, the, the defensive alignment is down there. So we'll have to see what happens with Carmel, but Mayapak, the two-headed Hydra, O'Shea and McKee, you got to contain them. Only McKee's sixth goal against Carmel this season. Get the announcement in a moment, see if we can pick up the assist. Coming back is Murphy! He's able to ring the bell and tie us at one. And that is a big goal for Murphy. Huge goal coming back right in that dangerous minute following. We mentioned that a little bit last game. That was what Carmel needed, get right back on the board. It took all of 12 seconds, and it's a 1-1 game. So great job by Carmel, and that was the key to that game on Sunday night. Each team would answer until eventually Mayapak was able to take over. Yeah, Carmel, Carmel was, was uh, resilient. Mayapak, we knew they were going to put up a lot of goals. They averaged well over eight goals a game. But Carmel just stuck with them for the majority of that game, and I think that was a bit of a surprise by, Carm, uh, by Mayapak. As the puck is played out into the neutral zone, the Indians come back in a two-on-two, -two, and a wrister goes up over the top of the crossbar and above Ravert as it goes down back behind the cage. Here's McKee, thinking wraparound, plays it back behind the cage again. And play will stop. Luke Galasano gets the assist on the... And it's hard to hear the other assist, yeah, I but I, I picked up pick the... Up. Yeah, I picked up the primary assist. And the Mayapak assists, I have to admit, I missed those completely. Crowd was cheering as they should. Yeah, with the microphone, uh, crowd microphone right by the Carmel uh, Rowdies over there, the uh, Carmel Crazies, if you will. They are uh, pretty loud tonight, and that's great. And the Mayapak Maniacs across the way. Everybody needs a name in this day, which is fine. Cardinal Crazies in Greenwich where I often hang my hat, so I get it. We didn't have these names when I was in school, which means we're old. <laughs> Played back by the Indians into their own zone, goes to the far side. In the corner, Nick Bricker will scoop it up there. Played now to the near side corner. 9.50 to go first period. 1-1 as we fight cancer here tonight at the Brewster Ice Arena. Across the line into the Maya Pack end. It'll be retrieved by the Indians and Cooper Betancourt. He'll play to the near side boards. Around those boards, he chips it back out to center. Puck loose there as it got away from Bricker. So the Rams will control it. 
Play a little cross ice to get it right back to the logo at center ice and across the line. Down that right side they go. By the way, Fox Lane won that game. I lost track of the final score against Pauling, but Fox Lane was in control pretty much all the way. Uh, Last I saw was 10-4. That's about what I thought. Bounced off the boards in the neutral zone, and it got away from Mike Sotilli of the Indians. 1-1 our score, 9-0-9 to go. First period here at the Brewster Ice Arena. Turned around and sent down along the right side into the corner as it'll be scooped up by Biagini. Around the boards, back behind the cage, grabbed once again by Ryan Carraher in a 1-1 game. Played to the near side in the Indian zone. So the Rams starting to crash the Indians' party a little more so. Can the Indians bring it back the other way? Because most of the play was leaning to the Carmel side of the rink tonight. The Rams will make a change. The Indians will grab behind their own net. They'll get things going from right to left. Looking for a little touch pass out to center. It's grabbed by the Indians, sent all the way down on net, and the save made just off the stick of Megan Raver. Goes behind the cage. The Rams will play it there with Gavin Golisano. And to the near side, out to center ice, comes the Mayapak Indians. Back ahead it goes with Aiden Martin. Through that neutral zone in a 1-1 tie with 8-10 to go in the first period. The other night was a little slow getting things started as well, but once it started, it didn't stop. Yeah, there was uh, once the floodgates were open, that was it. But I, I will tell you, the, the play so far this game is a lot different than it was last game. As we said at the top of the broadcast, neither coach was enamored with their team's play. Down the left side with McKee, goes back behind the net in the Carmel end, trying to set it up out in front, almost an own goal as it bounced off the stick of Gavin Golisano as he positioned himself. Into the left corner, Graham Ludwig comes along. Left circle now, it's grabbed by the Indians and Danny Shum. Back out to neutral zone ice with the Rams. The Rams and Zach Rubin send down the right side. 1-1, 7.28 to go, first period. Good crowd on hand tonight. And all for charity, a lot of money being raised here, and that's a good thing. They had a great night here last year. Mayapak won that game as well. The Rams trying to break a long, a fairly long losing streak now to the Indians. Left corner it goes. Jack Lagan there for the Rams, trying to set something up in the left circle. Sprawling down as Pasquale is there for the Indians, and there is the whistle and the call. And right as I went to watch the official make the call, a ram skated by, so let's see what the call will be. Yeah, I didn't see it. Nope, explained it, didn't indicate it. But nonetheless, Pasquale Fada will go off. So the two-minute penalty coming with 7.03 to go in the first. So make that at 9.57. Sounded like hooking. Yep, hooking it is. Indians have got it back behind the net. 1-1 tie, their second power play of the night. Send it out into the high slot. Go to the right circle now for the Indians with Bricker. Along the line and back behind the net. McKee trying to climb the ladder and go top shelf. Scooped back out to the left point. Hanging on there, rather at the right point, goes Martin. A big blast coming. Make that O'Shea actually was at the point, and out it comes. Along the right boards again, in the right circle, trying to position it was McKee. Along again in the right corner, 6-14 to go first period. 1-1 the score, 105 remaining on the penalty, and swept out of the zone by Stephen Mount. You know, Secura and, um, and Paradiso played really well against McKee there. They did not give him room to breathe. The Indians bring it across the line with McKee. Down the left side, into the left circle it goes. Heading toward the left corner now. On for the Indians is Matt LaFontaine. A couple of tries, and it's poked home by Bricker. It's a power play goal to give the Indians a 2-1 to lead. Yeah, there was a broken stick that was flying by, and I guarantee you that messed up uh, the, uh, Ravert there in net because she sees one thing coming and then another thing's coming, and it squeezed through. Unfor- unfortunately for her, she was not able to stop that puck, but it was a it's kind of a wacky little play there. So this time Mayapak takes advantage, and it's a 2-1 lead. Yeah, the other thing I was going to say with the um, with the penalty there is it was in the offensive zone, so I'm sure Carmel is not going to be happy with taking that penalty in the offensive zone. 
And that was another thing that uh, Coach Chachia said, too many penalties. That's going to be a perfect example of too many penalties. So a little bookkeeping is I'll get it all straight. Now they're saying it was Dundon. I thought it was 6, not 26. Yeah, I thought it was 6 too. Okay. It was, it was assisted, though, by um, <laughs> by the by, law firm. By, by, yes, the law firm of McKee and O'Shea. As play stops, I'm going to keep it on my book now for now as Bricker. But, of course, if that's the way it gets recorded, John Dundon's picking up a goal <laughs> that uh, he might not have been involved in. Uh, Dundon said he scored. That's all. Held in at the left point. Gets sent down. Pushed aside by McDougal. That was a tough play by McDougal. Sorry, Rob. Uh, that was deflected on the way in, and McDougal was able to sl- uh, flash that pad out, but it was it was going in if he wouldn't have got that pad out. That's exactly what I was going to say. A good job of just sweeping it away. 5-13 to go first period. Now 2-1 Mayapak as it comes back out into the neutral zone. Indians trying to nudge it forward. They do send it down the right side and into the corner. It'll just roll along the boards, come back behind the net with Graham Ludwig for the Rams. Along those near side boards, dancing through, here come the Indians again, looking for more. It's Martin who throws it on the cage, and it goes to the far side. Nice play, but couldn't get enough out on it. As it bounces off the glass and out to neutral zone ice, it'll be collected back by the Indians as they'll go get it with Martin. Martin, the alternate captain, as the captains are McKee and O'Shea for the Indians. On the other side for the Rams, their captains are LaFontaine and Mount. And a whistle stops play as it's covered up by Logan McDougal. One thing I, was, I would mention, Rob, um, I don't know if you saw it late in the, uh, or during the power play, um, there was a puck that was kind of deflected out in front, and um, Secura made a beautiful, in the air, basically a bunt to get that puck out of there. That was gonna, if that drops down, that's probably mm-hmm. going in the net. Yep. Great play by 16. Off the faceoff, sent out of the zone. The Indians will play it back into their own end as they'll reset. It started with Brian O'Shea. Now the Indians will collect it, get across the line. Here comes McKee down the left side to the circle he goes, just skating through. Couldn't find it. He'll go to the right circle now. Climbing into the corner, he's got Chris Chachera all over him. On the far boards, the Rams will start back out. We told you they are pink and black tonight. Black numbers on that pink field says Rams, or rather Carmel, on the front of it. For the Indians, they use their block-style blue logo in white on the purple field that almost looks blue. Otherwise, they do the blue and gold combination. The Rams work the blue as well as this will go to the side of the cage and the whistle will blow as the puck is trapped by Ravert. 3.46 to go first period, 2-1 Mayapak. One thing I would, I would say is, again, I'm watching a lot of the defense only because when we spoke with the coaches afterwards, um, the, the disappointment that somebody could score five against you, um, I'm watching the defense and how they're handling uh, McKee and O'Shea. They seem to be doing well. Unfortunately, they gave up a power play goal, but otherwise they're really they're, they're putting somebody on top of them at all times, especially O'Shea. McKee. O'Shea, left point, back out it goes with the Rams. They look to dance down the right side with Jack Lagan. Along comes Matt LaFontaine. He can't quite get it across the line, so the Indians will take it and go back the other way. Starts as a two-on-three for the Indians, trying to nudge it through to O'Shea, but when you've got McKee and O'Shea, you've got good numbers. Along the near side boards, it'll be O'Shea again. He goes all the way out toward the high slot, had it whacked away from him by Gavin Galasano, and into the Mayapak zone. Down goes an Indian. It looked like it was Nick Biagini. Comes back to the near side, and the Indians will bring it. The Indians getting with Bricker. Down on net it goes, and it's Ravert to hold on. After the whole confusion of John Dundon versus Nick Bricker, I had to double check if it was a 6 or a 26. Yeah, I was, I was also looking at, um, it looked like uh, Gavin Galasano there got tied up with, um, um, in, with the Maya Pack in the offensive zone there. Yeah, I think he it was, was Biagini. Biagini, yeah. He, he was not happy. He came back, and uh, there was a little chop going on there, and I was, I was curious to see if the refs were going to get him for a call afterwards, but they didn't. Two penalties so far, both of them on the Rams, as the Indians able to keep it in. Ryan Carraher now turned back the other way, and the Indians will, rather the Rams will bring it across with Murphy into the circle. He goes, Martin collided with him as well, no call. Off to the near side, trying to set something up out in front. The Rams trying to tie it in a 2-1 game, and McDougal will climb on top of it off to his right. 2.34 to go, first period, 2-1 Indians. Yeah, Carmel got a lot of pressure there. It was the uh, Mountain um, 
Murphy there, and it was a good offensive thrust that they made. McDougal had to hold on to that puck. It was a little, um, I guess we'll call it Keystone Cops a little bit down there <laughs> for a few seconds, but he just dove on that puck. That's all he has to do is stop the puck and make sure nobody jams in the garbage. Zach Rubin comes out for the faceoff for the Rams as he goes up against Bricker, fed back into the slot but swatted away by the Indians and Mike Sotilli. Indians get it back out to neutral zone ice, 2.20 to go in the first period. Mayapak leads 2-1. Indians have it across the line. Sotilli sends it down the right side and into the corner. Back behind the net to the near side, Carraher. Carraher along the line. Now it goes to the side of the left circle. Bricker there into the corner. Again, along comes Carraher. Carraher looking to pick it up right on the line. Sends it back to the left circle, but it's turned around and thrown out by Noah Richardson, a freshman for the Carmel Rams. The Indians will bring it back now to neutral zone ice with 1.50 to go first period. A big wrister comes just inside the line by Martin, and it's swatted aside by Raver into the right corner. Near side boards, out it goes. Martin, who was heading back to the blue line, grabs it and sends it cross ice. The Indians will turn and send the other way with Bricker and across the line with 90 seconds to go in the first period of a 2-1 game. A wrister thrown on the net and saved and held on to by Raver. Yeah, that was an unlucky play by Carmel. They went to clear the puck, and it bounced off of someone, and it came right down in the slot. Raver had to be big on that and uh, made the save squared to the shooter, and that's what, that's what you will, all you ask for with the goalie is get, get in front of that shot. Carraher was the shooter out of the right circle, so nice job by the netminder for Carmel, Megan Raver, the junior. Face off to her left as it goes around with 120 to go. In the first period, as Harold said, play better tonight. Just a better quality of game. It was very choppy last Sunday night. Made for an entertaining game in that it was so many goals, but this is more crisp tonight. Yeah, the passes are better, and the uh, the, the, the skating seems a little better. There's not as much uh, kind of bunching up. Trying to hold it in at the left point. It was Graham Ludwig. Sends down on net, and it'll be held on to by McDougal with 60 seconds remaining in the first period. Yeah, I think last game we saw a lot of scrambles in front of the net and just pucks bouncing around, and it was just it was it was sloppy. It was no other way to put it. And and I think both coaches would would say that they had the whole week. Mayapak did not play, so they were preparing for this game. And Carmel had a game against uh, Pauling, so they were focusing on this definitely. Face off to the right side of McDougal, off the face off, it goes into the right corner. Fifty seven seconds remaining in period number one. Two one Mayapak. The Indians with goals by McKee and we think Bricker with 49 remaining in the period. Play stops again. Yeah, I was getting, I was keeping an eye on the coaches. There's something, one of the, uh, I guess it's Coach Chacha that was not happy with something, and he's he's been kind of going back and forth on that bench. If you get a chance to see him there. Off the circle. It goes to the far side off the face off at the dot with 40 seconds remaining in period number one. Bounce the side to the near side boards. Collected Bricker. Turns around. Sends down. Actually, it was O'Shea. Jerseys get a little tangled up, and what you think might be a six becomes a nine. Back behind the net in the Carmel end. Thrown to the near side and out of the zone. So the Indians will grab at their own blue line. Send to O'Shea on the near boards with 22 remaining in the period. O'Shea goes cross ice. Getting across the line. Here they come. They keep the... Indians do stay on side with 16 to go in the period, but the Rams able to clear. Sent back out by Gavin Golisano. Now it's McKee as he comes across. Stick handling goes into the slot, into the circle. On net and swatted away. Good job defensively by the Rams. And that was Luke Golisano to clear the zone. And the period comes to an end at 2-1. to one. Yeah, Luke Golisano saved the goal. <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, great Heads up play to get that puck out. I do think he got he picked up a penalty at the end of the period there along with somebody from Mayapak. A little bit of slashing going on. Yeah, there was a, a couple of slashes. I saw the same thing, but 2-1 after one period of play. And again, I know I said it just a minute ago, but it's worth repeating. I'm just I like the quality of play here much more tonight. I like the temp the, the tempo is better, the skating is is well. The um much better, I should say. And uh, what I liked about it was they're shutting down those odd man breaks. Last game, I, I think in the first period alone, there might have been four or five odd man breaks. Here, I don't think I've, I think maybe one, maybe. So I think that's what that's what both coaches have, have stressed a little bit: the defense. And 
you know, if you talk to the coaches from Mayapac, they'll say, we gave up seven goals. If we play a powerhouse offensive team or a team that can shut down defense, we're in trouble. So they're not happy with the way their defense, the defensively they were playing. And Carmel is saying the same thing. We don't want to give up that many goals. We cannot give up that many goals. And we certainly have to stay out of the box. It looks like for sure... Initially, I saw John Dundon go into the Mayapak box. I have yet to see a Ram go off and nothing up on the scoreboard as of yet. But I, I did think there was a little something at the end of the period. It was definitely Luke Galasano who was, who was slashing. So um, I would be stunned if, if he didn't pick up the slashing penalty. And there you go. Hopping over the boards right now. So Dundon and Galasano for what we're going to guess would be slashes each. Now, at the high school level, I was just about to say, I believe they do play four-on-four, four and um, so they'll start four-on-four four with that, or they will, because they're matching minors, they're going five-on-five. Five. They're going five-on-five. Five. Now, I see four-on-four four all the time in Connecticut, but here they're playing five-on-five. Five. So two-one after one. McKeon, Bricker for Mayapak, and Murphy for Carmel. Second period underway. In fact, they're not even putting it up on the scoreboard, which is interesting as well. Cross ice it comes for the Rams. And the Rams, who will go now from right to left, go into the left corner with Murphy. Murphy goes behind the net. Out into the high slot it goes. A little wrister on net and score! It's Robert Paradiso. He should get credit for the goal to tie things at two. Excellent start of the period for, for Carmel. Uh, Paradiso has been taking more shots. Um, I think last game we saw him taking more shots. This game I might have been deflected on the way in, but it was a really good play. And one of the things you have to keep an eye on is that freshman Murphy, he can be a game changer out there. He holds the puck, skates really well. And I like watching the way he moves that puck. And it was a great little pass out. Paradiso scored. 2-2, 19 seconds into the second period. And they're saying it's LaFontaine. He might have deflected it. Might have deflected it. I saw it kind of get deflected. I couldn't tell you it was a Cuomo player. So Paradiso will get the assist. And Murphy gets an assist as well. Yep, and that, that makes total sense to me because I did see Murphy throw the puck out to Paradiso. So LaFontaine, the goal. To make it 2-2 with just about a minute gone, period number two. Here is LaFontaine. He goes back behind the net, left in. Little deflection goes off to the side of the Mayapak net. As McDougal was doing a nice job of getting in position, McKee will nudge it forward. Indians start back in a two-on-one. Here is McKee across the line. Goes left circle. Hard wrister score! Well, that was the first odd man rush of the period. Um, I know the coach will not be happy, unfortunately, for Shakura, who went for the puck and missed it. You can't allow McKee to go by you when he's on your side. So I think he'll be talk uh, spoken to. Um, he's been playing fan fantastically against him, but that was just a, a kind of a mental mistake going for the puck, and it led to a two-on-one, and he's not missing. No, you, you can't have an odd man rush there with McKee on the ice. You just can't. It can't, be ha it can't happen. So the Indians able to take a 3-2 lead very quickly. It took all of about 55 seconds. And it is unassisted. I thought so. To the left corner, the Rams swiping it back out but couldn't get it out of the zone. Mayapak keeps the pressure on. To the near side goes Carraher. Carraher chasing into the corner with Graham Ludwig. The two of them collide as it comes to the near side, held in right point by the Indians and Nick Biagini. Heading off into the right corner again. All the play stays there. Looks like another game may be going on later on if I just spied some players heading into the locker room. Rams bring it back. This gets a blocker pushed up and above and into the net of McDougal. So it goes back behind the cage of McDougal, stopping play with 15.06 to go. But I saw, you know, things always moving here. <laughs> yeah, they're always moving. And so many teams here. Yeah, and, and I would I want like to point out that Carmel Carmel's defense, by the way, is really young. They have no seniors on that defense. Uh, you have you have the sophomore in um, in Ludwig who you know he's playing big minutes. You have the senior uh, junior in Chikura. You have uh, Paradiso, who's also I believe a, uh, a um, 
a, a, a sophomore. So they have two sophomores, two juniors. I think Galasano um, plays back there occasionally. He's a junior. Carraher goes down the right side, now into the left circle, trying to set something up in the slot. Problem is, you had an Indian skating without a stick. This will come all the way down, and they'll blow the whistle for icing. I thought it maybe it was Danny Shum who was actually standing in the slot and is kind of like, oh, great, thanks for the puck. I've got no stick. Yeah, and it's not soccer. Nope. Can't put the puck in with your feet. Cannot. Again, and I'm, I'm, I've already gotten a text. I, I realize that folks are wondering where we are in the live world. It comes and it goes, basically, is the Internet situation here right now. It was even hard to get a text out to the person who had texted me and said, what's going on? Yeah, unfortunately, that's what happens, you know, in a metal building. There's lots of uh, interference here, and there's not a... I'm looking around. I don't see any extenders or, or no. network extenders in this area. And no Ethernet port to plug into as well. So we'll make the best of it. We'll get the game online almost immediately as a penalty quickly is whistled, and it'll be a hooking call, and I believe Mayapak will Zone head. Bricker. Yep. So Carmel will get their first power play of the night. And Carmel for sure letting Bricker hear it. Although I'm sure in this case, Bricker would happily say, now that was Dundon. <laughs> <laughs> and that comes with 2.28 gone in the second period. Face off to the right side of Logan McDougal. Bounces back out, and it's O'Shea on a breakaway shorthanded. Stops in the left circle, puts on the brakes, dances in. Oh, what a pretty play. Couldn't quite convert, but that was just gorgeous movement there and a penalty coming up as well as it comes out of the zone, out of the Ram zone, into the Indian end. Mayapak going for the touch with Martin. Martin, and now the Indians touch, and there is the whistle, and this is going to be a slash. Yeah, and I uh, on that play, I would have preferred Carmel just dump the puck in and get the extra two-man advantage as soon as possible. They carried it in a little bit, but still, they got a two-man with a lot of time. It looks like a minute and seven, I believe, or a minute 37. I can't tell if that's... They put the penalty initially up oh, it's on, on the... Carmel. I yeah. don't see how, because there's two in the Maya Pack box. Yeah, that's a mistake. And they're saying it's O'Shea who committed it. Yeah. And that was a set play, Rob. You can just tell right, oh, off, yeah. right off the faceoff. Um, O'Shea went behind the defense. Defense have got to keep an eye. I know we, we've been harping on the McKee train. Guess what? O'Shea will kill you just as fast. Oh, sure. <laughs> McKee has just had the impressive numbers, and don't get me wrong, he's great, but equally great, I think, is O'Shea. Yeah, I call them the two-headed Hydra. Trust me, if you, you die by one, you die by the other. Exactly. Rams have got it in a five-on-three. A wrister that was saved by McDougal. One timer out of the left circle, LaFontaine. Good save to reach out and grab it. A second try that is blasted well wide. Yeah, Carmel's controlling nicely. In the slot, that is blocked by Martin, goes off to the far boards. It was Gavin Gall, actually Chris Chichera, causing all the havoc out in the high slot. Far boards, 50 remaining on a five on three. 3-2 Mayapak right now with 13-19 to go in the period. And, boy, that's a bad mistake by the Rams as Gallus, or rather Chichera watched it go right out of the zone. Yeah, that was the I got it, you take it. Yep. LaFontaine will step across the line, go left side, leave it behind. It goes out of the zone again. Chichera had it go underneath. So it's Galasano to go retrieve it in his own zone. Down to 25 remaining in this five on three. The Rams did have a couple of good opportunities. Right circle blocked again by the Indians. Held in. This is Luke Galasano. High slot. Brings over. Left circle. Chichera throws it down and off the pad save made by McDougal. Down to 10 seconds to go on the five on three. Back behind the net. Here's Pasquale Fada. Goes almost out of the zone. Held in right point. Four remaining in the five on three. Just working it through traffic. It's Martin. Martin loses it. Another try. This corrals off to the near side. How that didn't go in, I did. I don't know. Chichera, right circle. Five on three is expired, but they score. Right circle, a 3-3 three -three game. McDougal did everything he could to keep that puck out. I think McDougal kicked the pad out to get that save. But Pommel, Pommel was very, very tenacious on that power play. 
couple of mistakes mentally, but they were really controlling the puck nicely, and Mayapak just couldn't could not keep up with the two man advantage. And when they got the one over, by the time the guy gets out, it's technically still a two man advantage. Gavin Golisano makes it a three three game. So a power play goal, and really it's the O'Shea slash that comes back to bite the Indians. And they're making the announcement right now. It's Galasano. And Fada gets the assist. Held in by the Indians in the Ram zone. Across the line, it goes with Nick Biagini. Rams able to clear it back out. 11.55 to go, a 3-3 game to the left circle. And an extra push after that play, and that's going to get a whistle immediately, although they have yet to blow it, but the penalty coming. And it looks like it'll be on Jack Leg, and I just saw the extra shove. The touch coming up, although the Indians still have it, so they'll get an extra skater on. Smart move by Tim Donaghy. To the near side it goes, turned right back around. Here comes Biagini. Biagini for the Indians as the Rams try to touch it. Extra skater on. Down goes Biagini down the right side. Dances around. There's the touch coming by Zach Rubin. And we'll get the whistle. Yeah, it's going to be a cross check, I believe, on, on Lagan. He um, definitely shoved him into the board. Yeah. That's a dangerous <laughs> play um, in the offensive zone. Um, Coach uh, Chacha is probably going to start pulling his hair out. He's going to look like me by the end of this game if they keep <laughs> taking that kind of a penalty. But, um, you know, when when you're getting when you're getting some good things going with a young team, occasionally they get a little rambunctious, and that can happen. That one was just, that was so obvious we could see it up here. Face off to the left side. Goes back, backhander right out in front by McKee as he's already looking for the hat trick. Goes to the left circle. It's O'Shea. Just wrists it down. Very gently, turned right back around. Rams almost had a two-on-one developing, but the Indians were able to get things back the other way. So here come the Indians in the slot with McKee. His wrister goes well up over the crossbar. Into the left corner it goes. Wrap around, you know who. It's McKee again. Power play goal. Mayapak with the answer every time. It's 4-3. Yep, and that was... um Again, not much the goalie can do when you're playing that way and, and you're starting to run around a little bit or skate, you know, dance around in your own zone. You cannot give McKee that kind of time behind the net who can just come right out in front. And if your goalie is not, you know, to that post, it's going to squeeze in, unfortunately, for Ravert. But in that case, get, you know, get a little frustrated with the penalty that you took because that's what cost the last two goals were scored on kind of undisciplined penalties. Slash and, and cross checks. McKee is almost, and I, I don't know this movie that well, but McKee is almost like he's in the Matrix right now. He just, almost like he can hold up in the middle of the play and go, sorry, Megan, and just sweep it right by her. Yeah, he's he's tremendous stick handler, and he's also a tremendous skater. Um, Carmel, Carmel was holding on to him, you know, playing pretty well, but when you're when you're on a power play, he's going to get free ice. Yeah. And that's not, and that's why, you know, Coach Chacha said, stay out of the box. And in this in this case, they didn't. So already a hat trick for McKee once again. It's 4-3 with 10.45 to go in the second period. On this night for charity as hockey fights cancer once again. Down the right side it goes. Back behind the net in the Ram zone. Hitting kind of picking up a little bit. And the whistle again. Very quick. And it's Mayapak who will head to the box. Looked like he was calling a roughing. And I think that's probably the right call but it didn't seem like it was all that you know nasty yeah he's calling a roughing yeah it's it's dundon for roughing and we'll say i i I was picking on carmel's undisciplined penalties that's an undisciplined penalty for mayapak you're in the offensive zone you should not be taking that kind of a penalty it gives coaches gray gray hair it really does (laughs) so it's a minor at two, at 624, rather, at the left point, back out into the high slot, sent wide off a wrister just inside the blue line. Set up by the Indians and cleared all the way down into the Ram zone. Ravert will leave it aside. It'll be grabbed by Murphy. Brendan Murphy will start things behind his own net, skating from right to left. They're in the pink with black tonight for Carmel. Of course, that not their usual colors, this being a charity night. 
To the left side it goes with Steven Mount. Mount into the left corner. He gets taken down, kind of tripped up, looking for a call, not going to get it as it goes down across into the Carmel zone. Here's O'Shea, left circle. Sweeps it along with a backhander, but pushed aside by Raver. Yeah, it was a nice little play by Raver because uh, that, that shot had a little something on it. To the near boards it goes. Held in by the Rams as the Indians able to keep the pressure on. They go down into the right corner of the Rams zone. One minute remaining on the power play. But this right now, exactly not where the Rams want it to be. They will touch with a penalty coming up. And I believe we've got interference this time. Yeah, this is, again, Carmel's undisciplined play is going to hurt them. It was an interference penalty on uh, 17, which would be Mount. Yep. Um, There, the... This was their power play, and it looked like Mayapak had the power play for the last 20 seconds. And, again, that's just they're running, they're skating well, but they're running around in their own zone, and you cannot do that against Mayapak. And all of a sudden, the penalty side of my score sheet is beginning to fill up. It's just, and that's the stuff that's going to drive a coach crazy, as you said. Now that was, I asked uh, any comments coming into this game, and that was the first and only thing he said was too many penalties. Yep. Off to the far boards it goes as the Rams will start back out. It's four on four now for 39 seconds. And the whistle will bring the play out of the Mayapak zone. One thing I, I, talking about the Carmel power play, one of the things I really like about what they, what they do on the power play is they set somebody up in the high slot, basically looking to deflect pucks in on McDougal. And it's worked really well. Rams will send down into the Mayapak zone. The Indians will scoop it up back behind their own net, starting in the corner and sending it around the boards to the far side. It's Cooper Betancourt for the Indians, but here's Murphy. Murphy goes into the right corner as the Ram fans trying to get fired up. Big Rister goes up into the netting and actually out of the rink, stopping play with 8.50 to go. This is some, you know, great... I can't even call it a hockey barn because it's such a collection of rinks with so many different things going on. And there's at least, what, three rinks in here? There are two big rinks and a small um, kind of like a training rink that they use for parties and for um, sessions. It's a great place. I wish When I was growing up, I would have loved to have something like this. You know, Section 1 hockey still in a lot of ways, I don't want to say it's in its infancy, but it's still very young. Yeah, very much so. And and I'm I'm really loving the... uh, the, the Section 1 hockey lately, and watching what the, how they're coming about. And these kids are really good players. It's fun to watch the development of Section 1 hockey for sure. To the far boards it goes with 8.38 to go. In the second period, 4-3 Mayapak. Martin will grab in the circle, back in his own zone. Looks, sends all the way down. Waiting at the line was Dundon, but it's turned right back around. Now the, the Indians do get it with McKee. Goes behind the net, and Ravert, in fact, able to trap it on the side of the net. With 54 remaining on the power play, and 8.21 to go in the second period. Yeah, Mayapak was, was, it was kind of, I, I would call it a set play, or they, a, a play that they usually have for some sort of a breakout play, because they definitely were looking for that puck behind the defenseman. Off the faceoff. Played by the Indians. They keep it across the line. It's their power play now. Sharp angle try will go back behind the net. Looking for a backhander. Trying to poke at it is Dundon. Dundon says, what do you mean you're blowing the whistle? But the whistle did blow, and Ravert able to hold on. 8.09 to go second period. 42 remaining on the penalty to Mount. It's 4-3, Mayapak. Again, this has been a... It's been a, a, a... an enjoyable game to watch. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not happy with the penalties. I think if they would stop the penalties, it would be a much better game. But otherwise, it's been exciting. There's been a lot of play, a lot of good plays. The Rams able to clear the zone all the way down. McDougal will come out of his net to the left, leave it in the circle, and send it to Martin on the near side in the circle. Now cross ice he goes, nudged forward by O'Shea. O'Shea, well, actually it'll be Bricker to take it, brings it over to Martin. Aiden Martin looking, bounces off the boards away from Murphy. 4-3 Mayapak, 7.40 to go in the second period. Cross ice goes Bricker, again to O'Shea. O'Shea being dogged by Luke Galsano. They get it out of the zone. Dogged as in Dax who was here tonight. Across the line goes McKee. Left circle, dancing in. Goes behind the cage, tries to throw it on net. A couple of swipes at it, and the whistle will blow and play will stop 
with 7.26 to go in the second period. It looked like Braver made a couple of nice saves there, but one of the other things I, I was watching was Dundon was standing um, on the blue line waiting for that pass. So they're splitting, they're, they're stretching out Carmel defense, not allowing them to come up a little bit. And by doing that, they're, they're getting those two-on-twos and odd-man rushes because Carmel has to keep their eye on that. Oh, that's, you know, especially if it's McKee, McKee back there or O'Shea. Again, we have mentioned as the faceoff goes to the left side of Raver, we've mentioned numerous times, and we'll keep mentioning it, of course, this is for charity tonight. Hockey fights cancer, so they are more than happy to accept any donations as they should so we can do what we can to continue fighting cancer. Play back behind the net in the Carmel zone, comes to the near side. Rams will start back out. They bring it across the Maya Pack line, dancing down into the left corner goes LaFontaine. Takes a little check there from Biagini as it goes to the far boards. Bounces off those boards, held in near the right point. 6.54 to go, second period, 4-3 Maya Pack. Carmel has yet to lead tonight. There have been a couple of ties near side in the corner. It'll be the Rams initially, but Maya Pack able to clear the zone. They'll get it back out. Heading down is Carraher across the line. He'll go to the top of the right circle, have it taken away. Now a blast coming, and it's deflected and hits the crossbar. Oh, that looked like it was going in, but no damage done. Held on to Biagini, sends it and deflected off into the left corner. Goes behind the net, Carraher there. Carraher, now it's left behind again in the right corner. Comes back out, waiting. Biagini could not keep it in the zone, so he'll play keep away as his teammates get on side. Good job of keeping it away from the Rams, who are in the pink tonight. The Indians wearing the purple. Biagini on the near side. He's a sophomore. Can play both the forward and defense. And the Indians able to clear with Carraher. Cross ice it goes. They'll send it down the left side, going with Cooper Betancourt. Betancourt, he tries it. It goes into the right corner. Comes all the way out of the zone. 5.48 to go. Second period. It's a 5-4, may have, or rather a 4-3 may have pack lead. I was looking at different numbers. Goes behind the net again. All penalties have expired. We're skating at even strength. Along the near boards and out of the zone. Five and a half remaining in the second period. May have pack up 4-3, but here's McKee. And he rings the bell off to the far boards in the corner. Held on and thrown down into the right corner of the Ram zone. The Rams bounce it off the boards, and it comes out. Biagini will chase it. Cross ice he goes, but it gets away as it was Betancourt for the Indians. McKee looks to start the play, but there's a Ram to swat it and get it away from any damage. That's Gavin Golisano. Out to neutral zone ice. The pushing resumes. Here's McKee, left circle. Good job defensively by the Rams to get it away, but held in just inside the line. And Ravert able to make the save and then jump on top of it, stopping play with 4.53 to go in the second period, still 4-3. And that was a nice save by Ravert, but the other thing I was going to say, and uh, you know, we forget to mention every once in a while, is on the second period, it's a long change. Right. Carmel's defense was out there a little too long. Um, I saw Fry was out there, the eighth grader. And um, he was he he was holding his own out there, but he was a little gassed at the end. And it was him and uh, I believe Chikura, uh, um, yes, had a difficult time getting off, and it almost led to an odd man break. McKee and Murphy for the draw comes back to O'Shea at the right point, blocked by a ram. It was Murphy goes behind the net, just bounces out in front. Ravert's doing a solid job, kind of settling in tonight. As it's still 4-3, she holds on with 4.43 to go in the second period. And that's the thing with the Carmel goaltending. They've really been unsettled to find any kind of consistency between the pipes. Yeah, I mean, the co it's basically goalie by committee at the moment. Um, Raybert's definitely holding them in this game. She's making a lot of big saves, as is McDougal for Mayapak. Um, but I do believe Carmel needs to... The, uh, the coaches are waiting for someone to step up and take the reins to be the number one goalie. Make the job their own. Off the boards to the far side. Indians looking to clear. Martin over there at the left point. The Rams get it out. Rams bringing it back. Right on, right to left they go. Across the line. Le left circle. Traffic out in front. Puck stays loose as McDougal's trying to climb on top of it. Now McKee parks himself in front of the net and he's able to keep it out. Great job by the Indians. Play stops though with a whistle and McDougal is kind of rolling around on the ice right now. The helmet off for one thing, and Martin getting tangled up with Luke Golisano. Yeah, that was uh, there was a lot of jamming at the net there, jamming at the puck. I've, uh, the, the ref has blown whistles faster in this game, 
Uh, I guess he had a good view of the puck. I couldn't see it, but again, he let them play, and unfortunately with uh, McDougal, he got the worst end of that. Um, and I believe that was McKee who might have saved that goal. I think um, I'm pretty sure it was. Was just able to sweep it aside. Keep in mind, they do not bring the Zamboni out in between the first and second period of these games. They will likely do it between the second and third. So there's a lot of loose snow out there. Just, a, you know, something to Slow keep in mind. Down. Yeah, sure does. Martin is staying out not too far from his netminder. He's a few yards away at the most talking with the two officials but Martin and Galasano were certainly scrumming a bit and Martin a defenseman and a captain an alternate captain coming over and defending his his goaltender absolutely and that's what you would expect from from any player on you know especially a leader on the team I did not see if you know specifically what there was for uh contact but there was a, it was so much jamming on the net it could have been anything somebody gets shoved into the goalie somebody takes an extra shot at the goalie you know but he seems to be okay. He's he was kind of reaching for his neck a few times, I noticed, as if he almost took some kind of you know, uh, stick to the yeah, neck. Yeah, stick possibly. to the neck. I, I noticed in the crowd, by the way, good job by Carmel. The fans immediately rose and gave him a, a nice ovation. But I noticed McDougal, when he was down on the ice and he was face down, I noticed he kind of glanced up, kind of lifted his head to look at the ice to see if there was any blood. Well, yeah, that, it, more than likely that could have been. It was one of two things, a stick or a skate, and I don't see it being a skate. Yeah, thank, so, thankfully not a skate. That's that's always a goaltender's See, he continues to reach nightmare. for his neck. But he's staying in, helmets back on, and they will play on off to the left side of Logan McDougal. So shout out to the senior as he does a good job of getting himself back in position or as our man five-minute major Travis Jackson would say, stick taps. Give him a hashtag stick tap tonight. Bring it back out to neutral zone ice. Harold and I have gotten stick taps. It's kind of nice. Last year we got them for doing this game, in fact. As it goes back behind the net, heading into the right corner of the Ram zone. 3.55 to go in the second period, 4-3. Again, I know sometimes the Internet is here for us and we're able to be live with you. Sometimes it disappears. Fear not. It will be on the Internet later, and the, the Indians have scored. This time it looks like it is Dundon doing the celebrating to make it the Indians taking now a 5-3 lead yeah and that's a goal that uh, Megan Ravert wants back um, it wasn't a hard shot it wasn't deflected it just looked like it squeezed through I would say five hole or it just went under the pad somehow um, for, for Carmel that's not the way they want to end a period so I would expect them to come out hard now and try this last couple of minutes to try to get some more offense based on this game they very well could score again <laughs> So the Indians up 5-3. Time the goal 13-16 as McDougal makes a save at the other end. And that was a tremendous save by McDougal, Rob. Um, Mayapak, almost on cue of me saying Carmel's going to get something going, gave the puck away, and it was a um, basic, basically, uh, I believe it was LaFontaine who came in and just all alone takes a shot, and McDougal made a huge glove save. 5-3 Indians face off to the left side of McDougal in the Mayapak zone. McKee for the draw with LaFontaine, and they get it out of the zone. Bounces right off the boards all alone. Here's O'Shea stick handling in the slot. Backhand goes back behind the net. He just missed it. Behind the net it goes, and they'll say, hold on right there. Puck, the net came off the moorings for a moment as well. Just kind of lifted up on the back end. Play stops, 322 to go in the second period. Yeah, it looked like Raver got the leg... Uh, the pad out for that possibly if not it just missed that post but again Carmel must pay attention on these set plays Maya Pack that was a set play they had they had the um, uh, I guess it was O'Shea mm -hmm. hanging up high and if you're not looking he's going in all alone and, and you better start to pay attention to that face off to the right side of Megan Raver down the left side again into the left corner the Rams able to swat it back behind to the near side, but the Indians keep the pressure on with Sotilli. He goes behind the net, gets taken up along the boards by Robert Paradiso. 3.05 to go second period. In the slot, turned around and sent out of the zone by the Rams. Indians are there. 
The Indians have a 5-3 lead on this Hockey Fights Cancer Night. The Rams trying to get something going, bounces off of Murphy, goes behind the net, and sent along with Cooper Betancourt to the far boards. Indians able to clear, start back in a three-on-two. Now it's a two-on-one as it goes along here on the doorstep. The wrister comes down, puck loose, fighting for it. It was Sotilli getting things going out of the right circle, and play does stop with 2.38 to go in the second. Graver came up big on that. Mayapak came in with, with uh, you know, arrived quickly in an ill uh, humor. They were basically <laughs> tramming that puck. They were looking to score again with 2.38 left. But Ravert held ground. That's a tough play as a goalie to hold ground on that and not go falling in or, or coming off the line and letting a, a puck go by. When it finally became a two-on-one in the Carmel zone, it was Sotilli and Bricker coming down, and it was Bricker, or rather Sotilli, in the right circle who started it off the feed from Bricker. Yeah, it was a nice play. It was just a better save. Nick Bricker for the face-off for Mayapak out of the circle to the right side. Off to the far boards it goes. Two and a half remaining in the second period. It's a 5-3 Mayapak lead. Out it comes. The Rams grab it. They go from right to left, bring it across the line. Trying to get fancy was Pasquale Fada. As he tried to make his way with a nifty move around an Indian defender. But it'll come all the way down, and the Indians bring it back. Bricker sends it on the doorstep, swatted away. Trying another try by Ravert. Off to the far side. Someone has lost some paraphernalia. Lost the yep. they call the bl- bl- whistle and they her. do. Yeah, when a goalie loses equipment, not the stick, but a glove or waffle or um, helmet, they got they usually blow the whistle as soon as they see it. And it was the glove and the stick. Both were off to her right. Play stops 204, second period. And Ravert has come up huge the last couple of shots. I mean, this is it's not easy facing this Mayapak offense, and she's holding up she's holding up well to the shots. Carmel just has to be a little more, uh, I don't know, controlled in their own zone and not allow the breaks that Mayapak's getting. Off the faceoff, goes right back on net. Mayapak saying that puck went in. I can see Sean McKee dancing from here. Yeah, the the body language of Raybert wasn't good, but I don't know if, if they're going to call it, if they saw well, it. The, in, the officials are talking it over. Both Tim Donahue and Sean McKee are absolutely frustrated. They think this is a goal, and the yeah. officials are saying no, no go. No, they point, he pointed to the faceoff circle, yep. so I guess they didn't see it. That's just one of those are bad. I think it's the best way to explain it. Uh, it's not going to assuage the Mayapak coaches who are furious right now. So with 2-0-1 to go in the period, a 5-3 Mayapak lead, another face-off, and the Rams will grab it. Could that be a turning point in the game? Hard to say. Carmel will have to take advantage. Into the right corner for the Rams goes Graham Ludwig. Back behind the net. They try to control it, go to the far side. They need to clear it and get things going to the other end. 1.45 to go, second period. Taken back behind the net. Now it's Bricker heading toward the left corner. Just trying to center, and it was O'Shea off a wrister. Comes to the near side, but the Indians keep the pressure on. McKee in the right corner. Martin is posted at the right point. It'll come back and all the way out of the zone. Martin will chase into the Mayapak end, but it'll go by for an icing, which we have not seen a lot of tonight. That's right, but uh, suddenly the ice has been tilted in um, Mayapak's favor down to the uh, Carmel end of the ice. Um, one thing also that they do not do in high school hockey as opposed to um, a professional is if you ice, you don't, you're don't. you allowed to make a line change. And that's a big deal because right. if, that was, if they were not allowed to make that line change on that play, Carmel's five were, were spent. And that would have been real difficult oh, yeah. for the final minute, especially with the long change. 121 remaining, second period, 5-3 Mayapak. Off the faceoff, comes into the near corner. Carmel able to control it initially. They need a big rush, but Mayapak able to keep the pressure on. Boy, did that have a whole all kinds of English on it as it went down and Raver able to push it aside into the left corner. 5-3 Indians, McKee in the left corner. Goes to the left circle, trying to wrist it. That's blasted, comes over near side. Controlled once again for the Indians by Nick Biagini. We're under a minute to go in the second period. 5-3 Mayapak. Everybody will get to catch their breath in the second intermission. 
Goes to the end boards and played there by John Dundon. In the right corner, the Indians trying to get things going. The Rams need to get it out of the zone because, as Harold said, they've been spent, able to clear. They had a two-on-one, could get nothing going, and the Indians will say thank you very much. Bricker brings it back into his own zone, lifts it off the glass, and ahead it goes. Here's McKee. McKee chasing. McKee right circle, sent down pad save. Dundon was looking for the rebound. Nice save by Raver. Puck cleared out of the zone. 22 remaining in the period as McDougal swats it aside. It'll be started by Cooper Betancourt. Goes again behind the net with 14 remaining in the second period. 5-3 Mayapak. Puck in the left corner as we're down to nine. Along the near boards. Turned around by Mayapak. Looked to clear with four. But they'll be happy to get out of the period with a 5-3 lead. And they do as the horn sounds. Or the buzzer or whatever you want to say. You know, McDougal played that puck, and it looked like the uh, the ref had his arm up for an icing, and I was wondering if that was going to come back and bite him because he basically played the puck right before the line. And that could be dangerous. <laughs> it sure can. 5-3 after 2. So, so far I've gathered that Pearl River is one of the teams that's here for whatever the next game is. I've noticed that. But that's it. That's all I've got for you. We had some players actually hanging out right behind us at one point. I thought we were going to be chatting with them. But in any event, two periods in the books. We will pull ourselves back together and take a break after two. Mayapak five, Carmel three. As tonight, hockey fights cancer. And we will return to fight it some more. But for now, from the Brewster Ice Arena, 5-3 Mayapak, you're listening to High School Ice Hockey. We're gone, but we're still here. Third period getting underway. We're here, we're not here. <laughs> I had to actually go outside to get a tweet through to tell everyone what's going on. Yeah, unfortunately, like I said, in a building of metal, um, yeah. it's very difficult to get a Wi-Fi signal that's consistent, and it's better to at least record it, have it ready, and then post it as soon as you can. Unbeknownst to us, McKee is going to start the third period in the penalty box. Did not see what that was about, and I did not hear an announcement, so it may come at the beginning of this period. We'll hear. By the way, I'm pretty sure I was able to spot uh, the Galasano's mother. She is down to the left, and the only reason I say that, I don't, I have not met her, but there's one woman here tonight wearing a pink caramel sweater with the numbers 11 slash 15 on the back of it. So I'm going to take a risk and say that's Luke and Gavin's mother. Or the president of the Galasano fan club, <laughs> which is possible. Which is entirely possible. Could be a family member, but I'm going to take that leap no, of faith. I'd say that's, that's more than likely it's mom. I don't know if I can get her on there. I think I see I her think you there. can. There she is. Sitting. I, I see the shot. Yep, she's sitting. There you go. Getting. She's not going to love that we're spying on her, but that's okay. We're getting mom on camera. She'll like it. <laughs> 5-3, Maya Pack on top as we head toward the third period. Rob Adams and Harold Turk with you from the Brewster Ice Arena. And, you know, I feel like, I don't, never want to make too much of technical issues, but I always feel like there's a part of me that needs to apologize, though I have no control over the Internet in this building. I accept your apology. Thank you. Makes me feel better. I usually apologize before any broadcast I'm on, and it has <laughs> nothing to do with technology. <laughs> You have been more than fine, as usual. I appreciate being here, and I love I love both of these programs. I love both of the schools. Um, it's weird to say as a Carmel resident, but no, I, I've got a lot of friends from Mayapak, so for me this is a lot of fun to do. Third period getting ready to get underway. As we explained, and we've explained it a couple of times, Harold lives in Carmel, has lived here about 23 years, I think, now. Yep has one who went through and graduated from Carmel and one who is in Carmel High School. And, well, back here, it's uh, me who went to Mayapak, and I have a son who will not go to Mayapak. <laughs> he goes to John Jay. Off the faceoff, we play in the third period, 5-3 Mayapak. The Rams on a power play now that has a minute and a half remaining on it. Hits back behind the net, goes toward the left corner. Rams keep the pressure on just inside the point. Waiting there is Murphy. Murphy along the left side board. Sends down the boards. Rams keep it alive. Go out to the high slot. Played there by Mount. Mount sends down. They'll throw it right back. And whistle will stop play. 
with 16-14 to go in the third period. Yeah, Cuomo, Cuomo's having a, a lot of con uh, puck control in this power play. You, you can tell that they're being patient, and that's what they need to do. They don't need to f force a goal when you, have, you start the period with the two-minute power play. And they did get a nice shot on net, uh, uh, but McDougal was, was equal to the task on that. Face off to the right side of Logan McDougal. Rams, of course, now going from left to right here in the third period. Off the draw, goes all the way down to Ravert, who will just touch it and leave it aside. Mount will go grab it in the right corner of his own zone. Sends back behind. Murphy, who's had a little bit more of a quiet night tonight. He does have a goal and an assist, but still was more of a, a bigger presence last Sunday when Mayapak won 9-7. Going down the, left, the right side into the right circle, goes behind the net, heading toward the left corner with 45 remaining on the power play. Goes to the left point, had to laugh at a couple of a couple of people were standing just off to our right, and all of a sudden they discovered we were doing the play-by-play -play of the game. A little unusual, I know. Mount with a backhander in the slot goes to the left corner. In the left corner. I don't think, uh, so far, I don't think Section 1 hockey has gotten a whole lot of play-by-play, -play, which is too bad, I might add. This will come down into the Carmel zone. 20 seconds remaining on the power play. There's McKee going into the right corner. Goes behind the net heading toward the left corner. And this all started really because of Travis Jackson, five-minute major, who I interviewed on my radio show. Across the line goes LaFontaine, and in offsides will stop play with 15.06 to go, seven remaining on the power play. But that's how it started. Five-minute major was on my show. He was talking about the Hockey Fights cancer game, and I said, I'll tell you what, do you want to broadcast? And he said, yeah, let's go. Next thing he knew, and I knew, he was talking to the Mayapak and Carmel coaches, and we did it a year ago, and we're back again. Yeah, and, and Travis is a huge supporter of Section 1 hockey, and he's, he's been great for it. Um, I know a lot of the programs really have bought into his, uh, his, his podcast and his, him being at a lot of these games. The so. tweets and the coverage and the Instagram, and he's all over it. Penalty has expired. And, you know, some in the traditional media quite honestly see him as a threat. I see him as great for this sport and great for high school sports. McKee left circle, and that's why he and I talk on a very consistent basis, even off season. Rister goes around the boards to the far side. May I pack up 5-3. A Rister again deflected up. This will actually go into the netting and right over Mama Galasano. Yep, she ducked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, did, she's... No worse for wear. Nope. No harm. But I would also say with one other thing with Travis, what I what I really enjoy about it is he um he, he really gets behind the kids. I know he, he has his all hair team and Alex Wood who's not here uh, playing tonight right. from Carmel, right. was picked to his um one of the all hair teams uh for him and uh he just has a lot of fun with the kids, and he, I think that's great. He does, and the teams have a lot of fun with him. Into the slot it goes, turned around and sent back out, chasing down the right side. He has basically said and he has a great marriage, great family, but he's just like my wife knows come hockey season. Oh, boy. <laughs> back behind the net in the Maya Pack zone, played along the far boards. He was here last year. We interviewed him in the uh, intermission break in the left circle, putting on the brakes. That looks like Murphy trying to throw it through. Mount now parked over in the left circle. It's Murphy in the corner. Goes back to the left point. Sent out into the high slot just inside the line. And the Rams able to score as it trickles in. It's a 5-4 game. Well, that was uh, a really good offensive um, play by, by Carmel. They got the puck across. Murphy was, uh, was great with the puck. Got it across to uh, Ludwig who made a just a... Just what they've been doing is getting a puck on net. So he won't get the goal. I believe it was stopped in front and put in. Um, but it was a beautiful play, and that's the right. That's what Carmel needed early on in this third period. We will see what the PA tells us, but 5-4 now. So it's LaFontaine, his second. And Murphy an assist. And Graham Ludwig gets an assist as well. So 5-4 with 13-25 remaining. Harold and I were talking about the 9-7 game during the intermission break. That was a 6-6 tie after two. So at least in that regard, this is a little bit of a different game. To the far boards it goes and out of the zone as it got underneath the stick of Martin. He'll turn around and send it. The Indians have to touch up. 
Back into the Rams zone. The Rams will grab. They clear. This will come all the way down as it was deflected, and McDougal has it kind of knuckle on him, and then he leaves it behind. Martin will take it in the left corner. Rams trying to keep the pressure on. Throw it back out to neutral zone ice. That's Christopher Frey. He is the eighth grader that we've alluded to. Fourth year in a row that the Rams have had to play with an eighth grader. Not a, not a bad thing by any stretch. It just means you've got a youngster on the ice as the puck comes down and is grabbed by Ravert along the line to her right. I don't see any harm in an eighth grader. If, if he's worthy of being on varsity, good for him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the, it's, it bodes well for Carmel hockey that they have eighth graders who have that kind of skill that can play and put out some decent minutes. You know, you know he's, not, he's not getting, you know, he's not doing 18 minutes a game, but he's getting some quality playing time. And a playing time against right now, one of the best teams in Section 1, the Indians 7-0. and But here's Murphy. Murphy going into the left circle for Carmel, heading down into the left corner, LaFontaine as well. In that left corner, they continue to play and bring it over to the near side boards. 5-4, Mayapak on top with 12.22 to go. Sent back out of the zone, and it'll be the Indians with McKee. He has a hat trick. Dances around the defender, Mount. Head sends it on net on a wrister and boink off the helmet of Ravert to the far boards, but it's a save nonetheless. On the far side, it's McKee had it taken away from him and wristed back out of the zone. The Indians will grab it once again. It'll be collected by Cooper Betancourt, sent it across, and it's the Rams with Gavin Golisano. Here are the Indians again, deflected. Bricker off the body of Graham Ludwig as it goes wide of the net to the far side. Ludwig sends it to that far side at the right point. Deflected right back and blocked by Mount. Turned around and out of the zone it comes with the Rams and Pasquale Fada. Down it goes into the Indian zone and the whistle stops. Everything with 11.35 to go, icing the call. Yeah, this has been a, this has been a, a, a very good start to the period for Carmel. They've been controlling more play than they had. You know, They've been shutting down Mayapak in the offensive zone, and that's not how the second period ended. So no. it's, it's, it's a lot better for Carmel. Hopefully, um, they, they, you know, Coach Chacha spoke to them and basically told them, play your game. You played the first period so strong. Don't go running around in your own zone. And they seem to be doing a lot better now. One the, goal game. The Carmel coach would have been well advised, and certainly Hattie, I would not blame him for going for the fire and brimstone in the locker room between periods. Going back behind the net is Carraher in the Carmel end. Brought along to the near side boards. Carraher now to the left side boards. Played down that left side once again. And for the Indians, it's Danny Shum. Heading toward the right corner. Along the boards there. Robert Paradiso as well. Defensively for the Rams. 5-4 and 11-09 to play. Next goal, I think, is very, very big in this game. Now, they can score easily, as Harold and I saw last Sunday night. Again, 16 goals total in that game. But you just feel like a momentum swing is coming on this next goal. Into the left corner it goes with 10.50 to go. And you're saying, well, how do you know there will be a let next goal? Have, have you been a part of these two games is all I can say. 5-4 the score as the Indians will bring it back. They skate from right to left through the neutral zone, get it across the line, and go down the left side with Carraher. Tangled up with Ludwig. Heading to the left corner, it's Ludwig that wins the battle, taken away and sent along. Starts with Chris Chichera and out of the zone it goes. In a two-on-two, they come across with Luke Galasano. Sends it across into the right circle, just swatting at it. It goes to the far boards. It'll be kept in by Frey along the far side, 5-4 with 10-18 remaining. Trapped up along the boards. Over there is McKee and as well as Mike Sotilli for the Indians. Coming down to 10 minutes remaining in regulation. Trying to get it across is Gavin Golisano. Get it out of his own zone. And it's the Indians, but it's the Rams taking it away. Rams turn it around. It'll be Frey. And then back down with the Indians. They'll go down the right side with Carraher. Carraher with a little collision. Frey got knocked down. The Rams wanted a call, did not get it. And the Indians have been the ones getting more of the power play time tonight. Taken away. The Indians get it back, and they get it out of their own zone. It's LaFontaine right at center ice. Turns around and sends it across. This time Frey gets taken down, I think, by McKee. It goes into the slot and taken once again. Dunned in there for the Indians into the far corner with Bricker. But the, so far, the striped shirts are letting them play in the third period. 9.25 remaining. It's a 5-4 game. Set up out in front. Puck off the net. The, off the mooring, rather. Dunden was there. Nothing doing. Ravert the save. 
play stops with 9.20 to go. Yeah, Mount took the um, the net off the mount. <laughs> so <laughs> um, it was uh, there was a lot of, um, I'll, I'll call, possibly, uh, you know, could have been called penalties. Mm. There was a few. I mean, the one play where I saw Coach Chacha was, had his hand up for a, a, a hook or a, a hold. But then right after that, the Mayapak player got taken down. And I saw, um, I think it was uh, Coach McGee, uh, McKee, Raising his hand. So. <laughs> I saw a little bit of everything. Off the faceoff, the Indians had a chance, but another save made by Raver. I have not heard shots on goal tonight, but I think she has been under, largely under assault tonight. Behind the net it goes. A little bit of a hook there as it goes to the far side boards. Looking to get it out with Bricker. Bricker turns, looks to send it to somebody, but nobody home. Indians keep the pressure on just across the line. Down it goes, and Raver takes it right into the body and holds on and delivers a little justice after the play to McGee. She's not afraid to mix it up. No, she she made a good save. She was uh, Raybert was was square to the shot, and you know it's good to see. I always like to see a goalie get a little like you know territorial. Yes, you you need to protect your space, and you know what? Yes, you want your defenseman coming in there and clearing house, but hey, nobody's a better housekeeper than yourself. There you go. Eight fifty three to go. Still five four. It was McKee for the face off to the right side. It'll be Martin chopping at it, out at center ice, gets away, and goes down the left side of the Mayapak zone. O'Shea will go collect it in the corner, sends it back to the left point where Paradiso was waiting. To the far boards, now Mount will grab in the corner. Trying to get it with a one-time little touch right out in front. It comes over to the near side boards, and that was Murphy. Murphy grabs in the slot, goes to the right circle. Murphy, backhander, trying to get something, nothing there. The Indians will take it with 8.20 remaining and clear the zone. Out it goes. Icing whistled with 8.18 to go. Now the icings pick up as these teams get tired. Absolutely. And I, I, don't bef- I wanted to, um, to go back to something you said earlier about um, Coach Chacha possibly fire and brimstone. If I'm Coach Donahue, I'm not necessarily letting Mayapak off the hook no. as well. No. Mayapak, Mayapak is 11th ranked in the state, and Carmel is a, you know, is a young 2-5 and five team. Carmel is giving them fits. For the second game in a row, by the way. Yes, rivalry plays into that to a certain extent. Held in by the Rams at the right point with Ludwig. Goes over into the corner. 8.06 remaining, a 5-4 game. Ludwig again just across the blue line. Sends down Mount with a backhander as it went off the end boards. Gets to the line. Out in front, and they score to tie it at 5. Again, Carmel controlled the play, and it's Mayapak seems to be just uh, disorganized at best in the uh, in their own zone, and Carmel is just tenacious, much like they were last game. Um, and I thought that they were they were, they were definitely put, taking it to them this period, and they scored obviously the two goals so far with a little less than eight minutes left in it. And I believe it's Lafontaine. I thought first to celebrate that would give him a hat trick as well. Yeah, I, I believe it was. Off the faceoff. Mayapak has answered quickly tonight. Here they come, and they do. And it's you-know-who. It's 6-5. Yep, and that was what Carmel did not need or want. And again, I'm not so sure that um, the matchup was, was to Carmel's advantage um, to face off on that, um, on that faceoff. He came... Um, when you got you know you put McKee, McKee out there following a goal, you know he's coming in. You you have to know he's coming in, and they allowed him space, and he got the puck, and and Fry was um, overmatched, unfortunately for the eighth grader for McKee, and it was it was pretty pretty much goaltender is not making that save, and it took all of ten seconds for McKee to score his fourth. So at 9-13, the Indians regain the lead at 6-5. You thought we had a new game, and I really did think that next goal was so big. Once the Rams scored, I thought, well, maybe here we go, but not so fast. As the Rams take it back, they start in what becomes a two-on-none. Breaking down, it's Murphy trying to tie it up. A penalty coming as it comes over to the near boards. Looking for a touch-up with 7-17 to go. There is the touch, and there is the indication. Hold, not a penalty shot. Didn't have a clear run there. Um, right call in my mind. I, I, everybody always kind of goes, oh, it's great if you can get a penalty shot in there. But I think that was the right call. But, again, Carmel at least responded well to get that penalty. So now Carmel's back on a power play. 
Um, I think that they need to control themselves uh, the way they did the last power play. They're playing very well with the puck on the power play, and there's good control. I just don't know. You know, again, I don't know how long Carmel can keep playing these games where they give up a goal less than a minute after they score. They have to be able to give Mayapak some, you know, let them get nervous a little bit. They, they don't have any time to get nervous after they score. I will say from a fan perspective, oh, yeah, penalty shot would have been fun. I think I've only called maybe two in my career. You don't see them very often at the high school level. But it was a straight two-minute minor. It's Betancourt going off. And it was a hold. Yeah. And that was. And, and if there's a good penalty to take, that's one. That's a good one. <laughs> Of, of course, it would have been, and it very could, very well could have been, a 2-3 to three on O. Carmel had three guys on the puck. They just couldn't get the puck clean. So it gave Betancourt a chance to catch up. My sense, by the way, is the game coming up after this one is Lake Lampanis against uh, Pearl River. Because Lake Lampanis does call the Brewster Ice Arena home as well. They combine and become the Rebels at that point. There are co-ops that don't necessarily have a mascot, but they do. They've been the Rebels for a bunch of years. The two uh, combined high schools, Lakeland and Panas. There's also Yorktown in the same area, but Lakeland Panas is their own school district. It'll be taken by Murphy. Murphy gets across the line. With 125 remaining on a, I don't want to overstate it and say it's a big power play, but I think it's an important one for Carmel. Yeah, Carmel can't go down two goals. Now, there's only six and a half minutes left. They're a little uh, disoriented here and uh, disorganized. Almost, yeah, and almost a terrible turnover and a lack of decision making between Galasano and LaFontaine, and it was McKee standing right there short handed, but they got it away and down into the Maya Pack zone. 59 remaining on this power play, 6 10 to go in regulation. Murphy from the point gets it down on net, and McDougal able to trap it just off to his side with 52 remaining on the advantage. You know, one thing I was noticing. Um, I can never get his name right. Chichura. I think Chichura. Chichura. That's been what I've gone had, with. Was playing left wing while Murphy was playing uh, right defense. Now, Chichura has been playing defense the whole game, but I think that that's one of the things that Carmel has done is put some size in front of McDougal, and it makes it difficult to see the puck. And I think that's a really good idea to block the, you know, the view. Off the face off to the near side and out of the zone it goes. Paradiso will chase into his own end with under six to go. A one-goal game at 6-5. They bring it out of the zone, work it through, get it across the line. Down the left side, trying to get something going there. Pasquale Feta goes, Fata goes back behind the net. They've got it out in front, and they score! In the slot, it's Jack Lagan tying us with a power play. Goal, we're knotted at 6. Yeah, Fata made that play, um, came in. With speed, with body, took the puck, and he just threw it in front, and Lagan was able to just jam it. He just rifled it home. McDougal was, had no chance. He, he, he went high. I think it was high uh, stick side, and that's always really tough for a, a goalie. So it's a 6-6 game with 5.43 remaining as the Rams make good on the Betancourt penalty. I believe now four power play goals in this game. And they're giving the goal to Fada. I don't see that as right at all. No. No, they got that one. That, that's the second time they've gotten it wrong tonight, in our opinion anyway. To the left circle, this is saved right off the body of Ravert. Harold will break it down like this is a Pruder film after the game is over to make, get that all squared away. Out it comes, and in the neutral zone, they'll get across the line. Will the Indians trying for a big slap shot was McKee. Had it deflected and kind of blocked by Galasano. Goes to the far side. Just wristed down along the boards to the near side by Martin. 4.55 remaining third period. A 6-6 game here at the Brewster Ice Arena. Along it comes into the left circle. O'Shea's kind of been quiet tonight. Didn't get a lot out of the left circle, but held in. Here's O'Shea, left circle, dances along the line. Oh, gets wide open, poked, nearly poked home by McKee. Nothing doing. McKee looking for another five. Wrap around, try coming here. Bricker to the far side it goes. A stick on the ice and cleared out. This would have been, I thought, an icing, but it got touched up 
by McDougal, so play continues. Rams will take it and swat it away. This comes down. This yeah. will be an icing. I think the previous play was deflected. That's why McDougal came out by a Mayapak person, a uh, Mayapak defender, uh, defenseman on the on the red line. It's possible. It's possible. I thought I saw the official hand up, so that's what I was going with. Yeah, I was watching. I wasn't watching behind me. I was watching in front, and I just it just seemed like it was deflected on the way in. But will the seven and zero Mayapak Indians rue the day that they missed an open net where McKee was standing right there trying to poke it in? It very well could be ruining. And keep in mind, there has been a goal that we both agree looked very much like a goal, but was a no-goal call in the second period. That also a difference maker in this game. Yeah, obviously high school hockey does not have the benefit of a replay. And here come the Rams again, down the right side with 4.02 remaining. Well, from a play-by-play perspective, Harold and I have got all the drama we want as this will roll down into the Rams zone and an icing whistle with 3.54 remaining. I'm not complaining. No, this has been a, this has been a much better game. Other than some of the bad penalties taken, um, I think it's been a much better game to watch. And, and the fact that nobody can hear it live. <laughs> well, I can edit out everything I have to say, and nobody will know I said it. That's great. <laughs> 3.54 remaining. Face-off will come to the left side of Logan McDougal. It'll be Mount for the Rams against McKee for the Indians and 3.50 to go with the win coming to Mayapak. But out it comes to the neutral zone and the Rams get it across the line. Down the left side with Paradiso into the corner looking for a centering try out to LaFontaine who we think have th- has three tonight. Here come the Indians and across to the circle they go and up over the top of the net comes to the near side. In the left corner, it's Bricker. Bricker in the left corner to the near side trying to trap it up along the boards about the one place we can't see the puck. Here's O'Shea, left circle. O'Shea gets something on it and a save made by Ravert. Back behind the net, here comes McKee. Turns and fires, deflected off into the left corner. 3-12 remaining. To the near side, boards will go into the left corner. 6-6 game, Carmel and Mayapak. Hockey fights, cancer night. It's been a good one and a couple of strokes at it out in front. And it's Ravert to hold on with 3-0-1 remaining. Raver came up big there. Carmel was running around a little, little bit more again in their zone. Um, Raver has been really good this period. She has been sharp, no question. And Carmel will spend their time out here with 3:01 to go. Yeah, I think that's a. I think that's a really wise decision. Carmel, like I said, they were running around. Um, it's a good chance for them to set up and and just go through the plan of how to get the puck out of there, what to do. Um, they have to worry about Mayapak's offense, obviously. Surprisingly, Mayapak is two goals down from their average, which is, you know, you, you wonder if Carmel, Carmel is going to see an onslaught coming out in the next couple of minutes of them trying to score because, you know, you know darn well, Mayapak does not want to have their unbeaten streak ended especially to Carmel. By the way, I think this is the best crowd of the night now because this whole second area, the second deck, has just filled up with people up here watching the game through the same windows that Harold. Harold and I basically created a press box tonight. The crowd, for the most part, still in the arena down below, so pretty good crowd for this one. And with with a 6-6 game, a lot of action, a lot of nice plays. The crowd's not leaving. It's not one of those, okay, yeah, you know, not that you got to worry about traffic on the way home, but you, sometimes it's like, you know what, uh, it's Friday night. Let me. I'd rather be anywhere. But this is a, this has been a really good game, and it's a good atmosphere for everybody to be at. Nice, safe atmosphere. So, family fun for sure. Three oh one remaining. Six six. Mayapak and Carmel to the right side of Ravert. It's McKee for the draw. Along comes O'Shea, tries to poke it home. Goes back behind the net, getting tangled up with Gavin Golisano. As they head toward the right corner, it's Golisano to come away with it. Looks to get it out of the zone and does. But Martin waits right there to poke it forward. Comes back into the Ram zone. 2.44 remaining, tied at 6. Time to buckle up. Back it goes into the Indian zone. Sent forward. Here come the Indians. Here's McKee in the slot. Dangerous dancing through. Goes off. Sends it on net. And Ravert stones him. Save of the night right there. Again, McKee comes in. Goes through the defense. Cuts through it like tissue paper, as I've heard somebody say once. <laughs> um, and he made a beautiful shot. Had it up high, but that glove flashed out. It was not flashy, but it was a beautiful save. Well played. A wise man once said, all you need is glove. Face off to the left side of Raver. 
Was that Freddy Krueger? <laughs> it was Chris Camlin to be exact. Oh. Off the faceoff, Cato, who has worked quite a few games with me over the years. Heading into the left corner, it is O'Shea. The champ was overrated, by the way, from the Carmel fans to the near side. Sends down back behind. Goes off the back of the net. We're down to 216. Whistle stops play. Faceoff will go to the left side of Ravert. Yeah, I know Carmel, Carmel is obviously going to do anything they can to try to get under the skin of, of Mayapak, especially McKee. But um, I know there was, uh, after the last game, when he scored his fifth, and he might have been when he picked up the, uh, the unsportsman, like he jumped and was commenting to the Carmel crowd. So I think they're, they have long memories. They sure do. Face off to the left side again. Control thrown on net, and it goes in. Oh, wow. Mayapak takes the lead 7-6 with 2-12 to go. That was a, just a tremendous draw, win, and shot. Nothing, not much Raver could do on that play at all. Carmel, again, they have two minutes left. Un you know, for them, they took the timeout, which was a good call. But now they have to, they have to regroup quickly and get, get that play going so they can get, you know, try to decide what they want to do with their offense. And I saw O'Shea as they, they broke out in a pretty wild celebration right down below us. It's all gamesmanship as O'Shea skated a little near the glass and just gave a little wave to the Carmel fans. That's well, payback. 7-6 the score. I think Bricker, but they have yet to announce it. Here it comes. And it is Bricker with the goal. Unassisted, Bricker, and it's his, it's his dad who's been hooking us up with the swag, so who am I to complain? Down the near side it comes. Here's O'Shea, left circle. Sends it big blast off a hard wrister, but it just clanks off the boards. Goes to the far boards. 150 to go. We'll keep an eye on Ravert. In that circle. Goes back behind Ravert, so nothing she can do right now. Stays in the right corner, turning around. It is McKee. It's McKee on net. And the save made by Ravert with 141 remaining in a 7-6 game. Yeah, Mayapak right now has just controlled the tempo of this, this last couple of minutes. Carmel has time. They don't need to race down, do a home run pass. They just need to be controlled. Get the, Oh, they make it a goaltending change. That's their way of timeout. Interesting. So Carmel will make a change and bring on Justin McCullough. Ravert played, I think she played really well. I know she gave up seven. Yeah, but I think she played really well because, as I said, she really was just under an assault of pucks all night I would from McKee and O'Shea and and company. I would say she gave up one, what I would deem bad goal, and one that wasn't called that would have been a bad goal. Um, so she really did not give up many bad goals. It was just that this is this is a smart play for the uh, for coach Chacha to get a chance to calm the, his team down and get a play going. He's drawn it up he's drawn up something on the uh, on the bench over there. So as you can tell, it, it's a tactical timeout with It absolutely timeout. is. And it's a legal play. Yep. And and in the in the the NHL and I believe at the college level, they don't do warm-ups. So you make that change, right. you go in, that's great, but that's it. But, it but is still, here at high school, you, you can, can do this. Yes. And you take advantage of it. Now you're running the risk of, you know, cold goalie a cold in. goalie for sure. Justin McCullough got the start on Sunday night when we were here. And Raver came in for one goal, if you recall. She came in for about a minute or two of play. Yeah, with a, there was an equipment issue. Right. And um, one shot, one goal. And, you know, it was, I felt, you know, everybody felt bad for Raver because that, that was a not, nobody was stopping that shot. But it, it just happened to be the shot she comes in for. To, and, and then Carmel uh, went down. Justin McCullough, who is a junior, steps into the net with 1.40 to go. He'll stay on briefly as it comes right back down and heads toward the right corner. Rams have to clear, but they do not. Indians keep the pressure on with McKee. Down to 127, out of the zone. It trickles away, and there goes McCullough. Extra skater will come on with 122 to go in a 7-6 game. Swatted around to the near side. Played toward Ludwig, but cleared out of the zone. The Rams will get back on defense, and it'll be Luke Galasano to go far side and get it out with Paradiso. Down the left side into the Indian zone. Out it comes again. Turned right back around, trying to get it away from McKee. They do. Gets it through. There's a, I think, a, a bottle on the ice as it's turned over and taken back, and the Indians can shoot at the open net, and they miss it. 
come to the near side in a 7-6 game with 50 seconds remaining in the third period. Out of the zone it goes. Net is empty. Again, to the far side, chasing the Indians. Very aggressive. Here's O'Shea. O'Shea to the right corner. So the Rams not getting much on the extra attacker. In that right corner, it is trapped there. A lot of play in the corner. Now the Rams will start back as the Indians were very aggressive. Uh, down it goes. Martin will touch it with 29 remaining. Clears, and it's taken by Jack Lagan. Lagan did tie it at one point, but here's McKee to finish it. McKee into the empty net, takes a look at Carmel and says adios. With 22 seconds left in the game, yep, that was basically it for Carmel. It was a valiant effort. Great game for them in terms of... Uh, Making Maya Pack worry. Um, I do think, you know, having a young team, they're they're going to need to address the undisciplined penalties, and that really will hurt them. But I think overall, they are a really young team, so they have nothing to hang their heads about. McKee, ten goals in two games. Just another night at the office. Aiden Martin gets the assist with 13 to go. Raver it back in net. In the meantime, and again, that's legal as well to the left circle they go as we're down to six seconds remaining. The Indians are going to win once again. I believe this will be six in a row for the Indians down to one and it's over. And seven, eight, six rather will be the final score. Well, it's far less offensive than last game. Nine, seven. Yeah. Now it was a good game. It was a it was a, it was a good game. There was a lot of um, action. What I liked about it was there were not many real breakaway or two on ones. And last game, I, I ran out, I, I ran out of the number of times that they came in on odd man rushes. Both teams. This game, there were a handful of them, and it was not even that many. The gamesmanship will continue between the Mayapak fans and the Carmel fans. Again, keep in mind, this is a rivalry that dates back many, many years. Not only, not so much on hockey. The hockey is still fairly new, but everything else, they have been rivals forever. Two, two teams and two schools that actually share a town, Mayapak being, in the town of Carmel. That's right. And one of the things I always laugh at um, when, I, when I talk to my friends are, you know, Arlington. You talk about Arlington. Arlington's a massive school district. Yeah, it is. And if you, could you imagine if Carmel and Mayapak became one school district, how, how, how impressive their teams would be in football, in hockey, in track, in, in soccer. Um, but they, you know, they obviously have enough to support the two school districts, um, and it's fine. But think about that's what Arlington has is 4,000 kids versus Carmel and Mayapak combined have 2,000 kids. They will go for a ceremonial picture just as they did last year because, again, this is a night for charity. They bring out the Hockey Fights Cancer banner. And the thing I actually like about to where we are, I know it has not worked Internet-wise. You're all going to hear this later on. Uh, but we get a better view of things, and we don't have to break down quickly where if we were up in the tower in the press tower we'd have to break down pretty quickly and get on out of here so we can actually watch this and kind of enjoy as the two teams look again their rivals as schools they don't like each other but there's a lot of good sportsmanship out there and now they will pose for that ceremonial picture there was a lot of uh, and, and this is what i love about these two these two teams and the two school districts is they were hugging each other after the game so they leave it on the ice and that's the way it should be um there's a lot of just good natured you know now the Mayapak kids, are told, the Carmel kids are going over because they were, you know, kind of mixed and matched. It's now they're separating. It's great. It's there's, great to see. There's a couple of Rams still mingled um, among the uh, the Indian players and uh, coaches, but in any event, they do their picture taking. They break that up, and it all turns out to be all good here tonight. Yep. And as, as a takeaway, if, if I you know thought you thought long and hard about this, Carmel again has shown. They can play with Mayapak. Now, Mayapak, if I'm the coach, is I, I'm I'm eight zero. I'm thrilled about that. But I would be honest, Carmel is a young team. They're not the elite. What is Maya, you know Mayapak has has some work to do to get that. You know they need to stop giving up six goals a game. Yes. So you know they play a better defensive team that may not take some penalties. They're not scoring eight or nine. So. 
just a concern if I'm if I'm Mayapak. I mean, it's hard to argue. You're you're eight no. You're you're looking. You know, you're, you're you're putting goals in at a you know a record pace. But the truth of the matter is, you know, Carmel is should not have been in two two goal games with them on paper. Just watching some of the sportsmanship on the ice. Logan McDougall was actually over helping collect some of the sticks for the Carmel players. So again, they're all going to talk a little stuff in between one another, but once the game is over, the sportsmanship seems to be pretty good. Yeah, and again, most of these kids, I think, you know, besides playing here, they probably play a lot of the travel teams together, and they know each other, and it's it's great to see, you know, afterwards the sportsmanship. And, you know, there's very few sports where after the game people are, you know, buddy buddy you know um, i can say that i see that a lot in cross country and in track and field because it's kind of a shared pain if you will um but in hockey yeah you know you're not gonna you're not gonna be you know bitter enemies and, and if you look at the nhl and some of the plays in the nhl they might hate each other on the ice and they may some of them in cases maybe brothers playing on different teams and they'll fight off the ice but they, they understand they leave it on the ice they do they do for sure we can recap the scoring and go through everything we don't have to rush as much as we did last time mckee got it started in the first period just about at the six minute mark it was one nothing murphy tied it at one just a few seconds later but bricker gave mayapak a 2-1 lead on a power play goal at the 11-12 mark didn't get all the assists tonight but in that case it was the two obvious names it was O'Shea and McKee, and that made it at that point a uh, a two-two game, or rather a two-one game. Two-two, not too long laughter in the second period. Nineteen seconds in, Lafontaine off assists from Paradiso and Murphy, and it was at that point two-two, three-two. McKee scores at. 114 of the period and that was a big part of this game tonight every time it's felt like Carmel scored Mayapak scored very quickly after 3-2 at that point Gavin Galasano made it 3-3 and a power play at 437 another power play goal this time from McKee at 603 it was 4-3 Mayapak heading into the back end of the second period Dundon at 13-16 made it 5-3 now I realize some of the announcements that were made in the rink had different names normally I would error on the side of what they're saying and it's probably what will go possibly what will go in the book but our eyes were pretty good on things that we saw up here tonight and i think there were a couple of goals that we disagreed on the announcement yeah specifically the uh the paradiso um i'm not not paradiso uh the one they gave to fada yes that was definitely i and i don't know how they could have you know they mixed that up but we'll watch the video and we'll see Third period now with Mayapak up 5-3. At 3-11, LaFontaine scores to make it 5-4, and then he scores again. That was the one. We thought clearly LaFontaine made it 5-5 at the 9:03 mark with the assist going to Mount. Then it was McKee at 9:13 made it 6-5 just 10 seconds later. Lagan at 11:17 made it 6-6 with a power play goal. Bricker made it 7-6. That was at the 1448 mark, and then McKee with the empty net at 1638. And that is that. Final score, 8 6. What do you have to wrap this up? Well, it was fantastic. It's always fun working with you, Rob. And um, I really do want to give out the, uh, you know, the, the Travis stick taps to, Absolutely. to, to Carmel and Mayapak for putting this together uh it's a phenomenal event it's, it's so important you know for the you know fighting cancer and watching these two teams who have a bitter rivalry come together for a great cause i know um you know they the, uh, ty lewis um campbell foundation is yeah. one of them uh and i believe that um I, I don't have the other one in front of me but i know they had a, it was for two two charities but i um i just think it's fant- fantastic and i think that seeing the Hockey gets it right most of the time. And in high school hockey, it's not the big glamorous sport. You know, it's it's not football. It's not basketball. But I'll tell you, you know, the, the crowds are great. The players are usually, you know, top-notch, you know, p- people. And they've been very, um, you know, embracing to us to do this and i I just i just appreciate it so i do too and uh both schools know now because i have talked to both coaches at one time or another and said look 
we'll bring our microphones back. If, if we can, we'll bring the camera back. We can't guarantee it. And the one thing you now have to be very aware of is the Wi-Fi situation. We'll make the best of it. So sometimes it might have to come on tape delay, which is not our preferred way. But tonight, that's what happened, and so it goes. We still had a good time. Yeah, we had a great time. And, and I would love to be able to do, a, you know, specifically um, soccer. Um, may have had Carmel soccer. And the reason why is, especially for the girls' side, I know so many of the players on both teams. So it's a lot of fun. It would be a lot of fun to do that. Um, you know, baseball is always fun, and, and football is... I will say, I did Maya Pat Carmel baseball last year. Didn't go so well for the Indians to end the season. That was a rough day. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and to be honest, it's, you know, it's, it's a sport that, you know, you love near and dear. I just, yeah. I, I just haven't watched all that much baseball, but it's, it's a great sport for high school level. Um, and, you know, obviously watching it. Track and field, you can't do much announcing at track and field. Okay? <laughs> just Although can't. I've done it. I have you can it. do a meet, um, but most of indoor the meets are easier to do. I will say that cross country. I've crawled cross country also. Not as easy as it might, unless you're on a car. even appear to be. Yes, yeah. unless you're on a car. And we tried that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just not easy to do. But yeah, I mean, I've never done Mayapak Carmel football. Soccer would be fun. I've done the baseball. We'll probably do some baseball again this year, this upcoming spring. So yeah, to see all those things be fun. I haven't done basketball either for Mayapak and Carmel, but I know that's not your game. I could. I would. <laughs> If you think I'm bad for hockey, <laughs> I don't think I, I, don't I know. think you're great for hockey. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about basketball. I never played it, and and I enjoy college basketball a lot. But I would never be able to. I wouldn't know half. I don't even know the <laughs> rules. I'm like, uh, you know, is that a you know what is that a you know, touchdown? What? <laughs> Lakeland Panis is getting ready to take the ice. So. We'll let them play their game against Pearl River and Harold and I will get out of here. Once again, your final score, 8-6. Mayapak now, 8-0. Carmel's going to get it together. They're 2-6. They'll be fine. They're young, but they're growing. I like the I like things I see from them. They just have to not make the mistakes that they've made. It's a maturity thing. Yeah. And they have three seniors on the team. All, uh, all of their major scoring is really young. I mean, Murphy is a freshman. Can you imagine what he's going to be like in three he's years? He's going to be fun. He's gonna. He could be the dominant player for Carmel I think for the so. next three years. He's he's borderline now, and of course, knowing that um, uh, O'Connell uh, is is out, right? He's been out for, and he's going to be out for at least another week. That's right. That's going to be much better for Carmel to get some offense. I think they need they they need to do some work. They need to get a goal. The goalie need situation needs to get sorted out. Their defense is good and young. I think they I think they get a little. Um, Run, they get a bit, a little bit running around, right? But I think that again, they're young, and it's not easy to, you know, basically play one on one with with the likes of O'Shea and Mickey. It's just you know they're such strong players, and physical and big. And I saw I saw Fry against McKee and um, at one time, and uh, McKee's probably got him by a foot and a half. I kept saying Fry, my apologies, yeah. Fry. But, and, but seeing fr- seeing Fry against McKee, I mean, look, he's an eighth grader, and he he held his own. I mean, you know, except for the one agree. play where he went through him, it's he's he, you know, this is a young defense for Carmel. I think that they can they got a lot of upside. They really do, and I think it's gonna it bodes well for the future for them. And this is a golden year for the Mayapak Indians. It just feels like a little disappointing last year the way they went out in the playoffs early on against I think Clarkstown, if I recall, and now. Here they are with these two great players, plus a, a good supporting cast, good goaltending. Not to say it's a now or never year, but they're a year. They're they're in the middle of a big year. You feel it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that you know when you look at you look at their their aging um, group, they have seven seniors, I believe. Right. But they're they're fifty something percent, sixty percent of their offense are those two players, uh, O'Shea and McKee. They got to pick it up from someone else. You know, somebody else has got to take the the torch, if you will, the mantle. Um, if if I'm Mayapak, I'm trying to get that desperately because, come playoff situation, shutdown teams yeah. are going to shut try to shut down McKee and O'Shea, and somebody has to pick up the scoring there. Somebody has to. I mean, Bricker did a really good job today, and there were a couple of other you know players who definitely did well. But when you when you look at five goals, five goals, you know, three goals, it's yeah, they're gonna have they're gonna have their work cut out for them against those stronger teams, the Sufferings and um, you know North Rocklands and, and others that have some you know, some good defense and goaltending. I mean, you know, 
again, don't know no, if it was not a, it's not a slide at, at Ravert uh, or, or or Carmel's goaltending, but they are they're they're fairly inexperienced playing against these type of teams. And you know when you get some of the better school goaltenders who are out there who have like a two point something goals against average, some of those goals aren't going in. And Manpack right back to the ice tomorrow night. They play Horace Greeley right back here at the BIA. Yeah, Carmel, Carmel had a game with uh, Greeley, but it was canceled due to inclement weather. Yeah, I believe or, so. Yeah, so that, I don't know much about what their record is this year, but I think that it's going to get harder for Carmel down uh, for Mayapak down the road now. They're going to start picking up and, and playing some. You have the schedule in front they, of you. Yeah, they're heading up to Union College right after Christmas, so Wednesday, Thursday tilt up at Union College. They'll play Niskayuna, Schenectady, Albany on Wednesday at 3, that counts actually as a home game, and then they'll play at, uh, against LaSalle as a road game on Thursday at 2.30 before they get the New Year started against Rivertown down at uh, the Westchester Skating Academy in Elmsford. So, yeah, it does get it, it gets interesting down the stretch for sure. Yeah, and I'd like to see I'd like to see what they do against some of these more com, you know competitive winning type programs. Carmel Carmel is has a lot of upside. I, I'm real. Happy to see their development. I mean, I think the two games they played today, um, today and less uh, on Sunday, they they gave Mayapak all they could handle. Yep. And and Mayapak knows that. And today especially, this game could have gone either way. It's a one goal game, empty net. Um, I just think that Mayapak, this really is their year. They have to make some noise. They're eleventh in the state, second in section one, yeah, second in section one, and they have. They have the offense. It's my 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 concern. If I'm a you know a Mayapak fan, is how many goals are they going to give up? Yep. Because you know you gave up 12 goals to uh, or 13 goals to Carmel in two games. Right. That's right. I mean, not it's not you know, again. It sounds like it's a shot at Carmel, but Carmel is not the elite. So Carmel Carmel's you know still struggling to find an identity, and you've given up 13 goals. And how many power play goals they give up? So now you got uh, you know today they sco- uh, Carmel scored at least two or three power play goals, right? Exactly. I, I think the big takeaway is both teams have some things to think about. Absolutely. And I think I think both teams should be happy with the development of their teams. I mean, Carmel, it, they knew it was a rebuilding, it's a rebuilding process or it's a building process. If it, you know, you know, you have to get it built before you can rebuild it. But Mayapak, they have they this is it for them. This is a good year for them and yep. their best players are out on that team and they're seniors. So I'd like to see what Mayapak can do and make some noise for Section 1 coming down the stretch. Hopefully we'll be back to visit with you, uh, if not before the first of the year, then sometime in 2019. If not, once again, it's been a lot of fun. We've done both the Carmel Mayapak games, and it, we'd love to see it. You know, see more of these two teams. If not, all good, but uh, definitely a lot of fun, and thanks to Harold for joining me, and we'll see you soon. I'm offering you a chance to say goodbye. Goodbye. That's what I thought you were going to say. That will do it from here at the Brewster Ice Arena with the final score once again, Mayapak 8 and Carmel 6 with the Indians getting the win here tonight as they improve once again to 8-0 and on this season. We'll see you on the Rob Casting side right after Christmas. Jake Zimmer and I will have some basketball for you. It's the Fairfield Prep Holiday Tournament from Alumni Hall in Fairfield, Connecticut. We'll see you at 6 o'clock next Thursday. But for now, your final score, Mayapak 8 and Carmel 6 as the Indians win on Hockey Fights Cancer Night 2018 into 19. For Harold Turk, I'm Rob Adams saying goodnight from the Brewster Ice Arena. We will see you, as I said, next Thursday for basketball when we see the Fairfield Prep Holiday Tournament. But for now, from the Brewster Ice Arena, thanks to Mayapak and Carmel, and good night, everyone. Powered by Rob Casting Radio. This concludes our broadcasting day. For more information, follow us on Twitter at Rob Casting Radio. Thank you for listening.